Hey y'all, welcome back to the Hack Shack. Today we've got a fresh box from HackerBox. This one is all about that badge life. And if you're not familiar with the badge life, there's a great documentary here I'll put a link in the description for from Hackaday that talks all about it to give you a better understanding if you're not familiar with it. Let's get this on the bench and open it up and see what we've got inside here. Looks like we've got some jumpers here. It's a very cool lanyard. A neat little I squared C OLED display here. A cool totem badge for SAOs. The IoT Gator PCB for mission control. This cool breakout badge for the ESP8266. Very neat badge here. Nice hack sticker there. Got some LEDs, resistors, switches, miscellaneous stuff there we'll be using. A battery holder thing here for the coin cells. There's actual ESP module right here we'll be using. Some rubber feet. Actual coin cell batteries. The little serial module for talking to the ESP. Some header pins. Another battery holder. This is the Bithead SAO here. The Guy Fox SAO. The Trippy the Space Sloth decal for the Trippy the Space Sloth SAO right here. Artemis SAO. Look at that. Really neat looking. And here are the sockets we'll put on that totem PCB. This is what the SAO pins will plug into. And last but not least, a nice high quality reference card, which will actually come in handy for me later here. So some of the kit I used the nice instructions that HackerBox made available via Instructables. Easy to follow instructions that cover everything here. I started with this ESP breakout board here and earlier in the day I'd separated components out and used a little bit of tape to kind of uh, keep things together. At the ESP, LEDs, resistors, battery holder, and switch. I tackled these resistors first, trying to get them into place and I held them in place with a little bit of blue tack and soldered down one side first, removed the blue tack, and then soldered the other side. Next, I used a bit of blue tack to hold down the battery holder on the back and soldered it into place. Used more blue tack and soldered the switch into place. Next, I flipped the PCB over and soldered this LED into place. Next, it was time to solder the actual ESP module to the PCB. I began cleaning the PCB when I realized I'd missed a whole section of pins on the ESP, so I had to get those soldered up too. Next, I started on the Gator PCB. I'd previously stuck the cap on this little joystick and already had it in the PCB, so I just left it there for safekeeping. I started with these capacitors first, making note of the instructions to make the dark block go with the top block there on the PCB. Next, I did this regulator, but because it had such a beefy pad, I put a tad of flux there and then went to soldering it. Next, I put this RGB LED into place, making note to orient as directed in the instructions. Then I soldered the pin headers on this serial module. After those were in place, I used a pick to work off this plastic piece so that it could sit flush on the PCB. Next, with that held in place flush with some blue tack, I soldered the serial module into place and then clipped the leads that were hanging off. Then I soldered the joystick into place. Next, I soldered the OLED display into place and then gave everything a good scrub. I next worked on the totem PCB. Basically, it was the three sockets soldered into place, a switch, and a battery holder, and that's it, with a little cleanup at the end. Now it's time to work on our SAOs, our simple add-ons, which is kind of a cool little standard for the people in the badge life scene. And because everyone's kind of agreed on this little pseudo standard, you can trade and so forth with the badges and they'll all work on whatever you plug them into, which is kind of cool. I did Trippy the Space Sloth first. He's got a little label that you uh, peel and stick on the front. 
I use the resistor to poke holes from the back and then you insert the LED again from the front sticker side paying attention to the directions that tell you which side has the long leg and which side has the short leg. Next was bit head. Same as the others, just following uh, the LED, putting the large side on the large side, small on the small, soldering those in place, putting those pins on there. And um, for the color LEDs I used, it required a, I guess a zero ohm resistor. I didn't see one in the pack, so I assumed that I could just bridge that like right there to, you know, basically make that a short across there for zero ohms. Next was the Guy Fawkes one. More of the same, just, you know, using the resistor value that's specified that goes with the color LEDs that you've chosen to use according to the instructions. And I will also take a moment to say before I speed things back up, take heed to the advice from the instructions that talk about loosening up the SAO sockets and the SAO pins because it's very tight and you will rip the traces right off of your SAO boards if you don't do that ahead of time. They are very tight. I would, uh, for each socket, I would take some pins and really, you know, use some pliers or something and work those in and out to make sure, you know, you don't want it sloppy loose, but it needs to not be so hard that you damage your uh, SAO when you're put, pulling them in and out or trading with folks. Next with this cool Artemis badge, SAO thing, and it was more of the same. Just using the right values for the color LED I chose and cutting off some more header pins here to use to attach to the back of it. Pretty straightforward, just like the others. Now it's time to test these things out. So I grabbed one of the coin cells from the kit and stuck it in the totem and plugged in some things and turned the switch on and uh, things look pretty good. That's working just fine. The Artemis one's looking okay. If you notice though, I've got one eye out on the Guy Fox one. So we need to check that out. I had tried to just reflow the connections, but that LED did not want to work. So I ended up using a little bit of solder braid and or desoldering braid rather, and just removing that LED and swapping in a new one. And it seemed to work okay. These are very cool. It'd be fun to play around and trade these with folks at conferences. After completing the SAO boards, I got back to the Gator and ESP board to try to wire those up with the jumpers as indicated in the instructions and try to push some code to it. I had a heck of a time trying to get the code to it and it didn't work and I drove myself crazy for longer than I want to admit. But ultimately this ended up being the problem. It was a bridge between these two pins on the ESP. And once I cleared that out, the code ran fine and worked like it was supposed to. Not long after that, I discovered the left direction wasn't working. And I ended up narrowing that down and realizing that this pin right here was not uh, actually fully making contact. So I added a little more solder and heat to that and that fixed that up. I gave that a test by trying the Arkanoid clone here. And that seemed to work like a champ. That's a fun little thing to do with this. And I also can't wait to try some of the more IoT Wi-Fi type things with this. I'll be doing that a little bit later. But all in all, this is a great kit to get uh, this month from Hacker Boxes. So very pleased with this. And I like the way this is broken out. So it'd be nice for showing folks or experimenting and, th and things like that. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.